Alrighty. All this way. One, two, to three. We're already up to episode three already, Luffy? Oh my god, man. I don't know what you gotta say to that, but I'm I'm that's, ecstatic, man. That's a that's a I believe what's known in the business as a hat trick. Hey, there you go. I like that term. Nice little pun. Like that one. Love it a lot. But welcome, guys. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the podcast Behind the Call Out. Once again, this is episode three. And of course, one of your main lovely co hosts of Monkey, of course. And then, you know, Monkey with a three. So make sure you get that guys right. And then also, we have Loopy helping me on the sidelines, like always. What's up, Loopy? What's up? And I have no numbers in my name. Despite having two O's, <laughs> despite having two O's, <laughs> two O's, two O's. You know, it's very, very important to say that. And of course, today, guys, it's gonna be a little different because we have actually have a guest today. One of our statistics, one of our major, major legend that's always taking care of everything collective wise when it comes to stats, and that's the man Drew. So hi, Drew. Say hi to the fans out there, man. Hey guys, thanks for the words. <laughs> Legend, legendary voice already. Look at that; he fits right in. But, so we're gonna go straight into detail, man. It's despite being sort of like one of those background people, Drew's pretty well known. Like, oh, yes. everyone always talks about stats being like a thankless job or whatever. But one of the things that I always felt like was interesting about Collective as a whole is almost everyone knows who Drew is, and everyone appreciates. Yeah, they love Drew's their work. stats. <laughs> yeah, they, they exactly. love being their stats at the end of games. Trust so. me. Being as a player and an IGL for the team I am, and yes, I love the stats and I love just saying, oh, okay, we do this bad at this map. Okay, this is what Drew does, guys. That's literally what he does. He tells you if you if you really suck at a map or you're really good at a map. <laughs> so that's what you're looking for. If you like this man, Drew then you hear a lot of more. Get good. In this. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I keep you honest. Oh, yes. <laughs> but everybody at home, guys, of course, thank you for joining us. So just to let you guys know what's going to be going on for the podcast today. And again, the day that we're recording this is the 18th today, of course, of is May of 18th, of course, guys. So you guys inform me what we're going to be talking about, kind of like the topics going to be discussing. We have a bracket, of course, the bracket is moving on. We did our, have our matches already happened, so we have to wait for those to kind of enroll. So we're going to be talking about that today. Um, Drew is here today, obviously, so we're going to be talking about stats and what he does for the collective and, uh, of course, as a whole for this whole organization that we have. And uh, it's going to be a definitely good topic for him, especially having him here. Um, you know, he's here all the time just listening, and he's one of the biggest fans, of course, behind the call-out. So having him with the stats is, is going to be really cool for you guys to listen to, especially. Hopefully you guys are interested in that, of course, because I am. I know Loopy is as well. Um, but you know, to, to jump into conclusions of that, we're going to be talking about that, we're talking about the bracket, we're going to talk about the future of the bracket as well, um, answering, of course, the question of the week. We're also going to be discussing a new question of the week, so we can't wait to jump right into that. Uh, but Loopy, let's just not waste any time at all. Let's go straight into the bracket. Um, you know that bracket number one already kind of finished. We did have Witch Doctor Gaming winning their game by default. And of course, guys, if you guys are looking at the bracket right on your screen or listening at which Doctor Gaming actually changed their name now. Of course, they went back to a what if their little, aka previous names that they had back in the past, and now Element One Hundred and Eleven. So of course, Element One One One. Uh, they've changed their game now. Their their tag now. Of course, a new brand new logo as well. So we'll probably put you up there as well, uh, so everybody can see that at home. But Elite, um, excuse me, Element Eleven One pretty much just took over and won against Prime Elite. Um, sadly, Prime Elite was not able to win their game or even play their game, sadly. So that means that Element 111 did move on to their next win in the next bracket, of course. It's their next fighting opponent. But jumping into the right topic, though, it was Farside Gaming, Bravo, actually taking on Team U. So go ahead, Loopy. I'm going to leave that to you, buddy. What do you think and what happened to that game, if you want to let everybody know at home? Well, I definitely think um, Farside in general, because like, there's obviously Alpha and Bravo. Um, as the name suggests, uh, has always has, is, is I, I, the oldest team in collective. Period. Not necessarily Farside Bravo, but Farside as an organization is the oldest one in collective. Um, they were only matched by one other team, but sadly that team disbanded. Um, that team was F6. If anyone is curious, uh, uh, they just recently disbanded. So I definitely think that they definitely have, um the work effort and the what and all of that fun stuff, the worth of ethic, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh that they definitely like I think they like, you know, they stuck to their guns. They did what they knew would work. They went to a map they were comfortable on. Um and they just I think they just, you know, cleaned up shop, you know, pretty by the book. Now it wasn't a blowout. So obviously there is still things to be adjusted, but there even if even in a blowout, like a seven oh, there is always going to be a mistake here and there. So a seven five though is a solid showing. You know, by both teams, because they didn't, it wasn't a complete blowout. So you, from an outsider looking in, you're sort of like, okay, things went wrong here. So it was a good match. I'm sure it was fantastic, but they did avoid that 
overtime, which just no one likes to see. No one playing likes to go to. People watching love to see overtime. But as um, someone being on both sides of the coin, I have been on both sides of the coin, going to overtime as a player is one of those things that's a little disheartening because you're just sort of like, you got to play those two extra rounds, which just take a little bit more out of you. It goes a little bit later. You get a little bit more fatigued. So good on them for um, avoiding that. But overall, it's just it seems that they they did they they sort of just stuck to their guns. That's what it seems to me, and it pulled out in the end. But it definitely seemed like it was a hard match. You can probably give a little bit more insight than I can, considering that uh, you are the IGL of Farside Alpha. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, uh, what happened, especially that day, is that we got together in a scrim, pretty much a 10s game, and uh, just giving them a little warms up, giving them heads up of how they play it. But the thing that was actually weird about the tryout and the, and the, and the training that happened um, that day was that it was on Oregon, you know? So um, being on Oregon is <laughs> it's something brand new. Obviously, in other, let's say, pro league settings, um, they don't play Oregon like that, and of course, because it's not in their map pool. And for us, we put it in our map pool, and to find to actual actually see it come out was something very competitive for us. So we didn't know what was going on. We were like, okay, let's try something new. Let's see what what to expect and what to show you guys. Um, they were a little like off their tempo of how they played the map, uh, but they were ready for it because recently I've actually predicted, and of course in the last podcast, I think I said it was seven three, and they took this, you know, they took unit seven five. So, um, they, again, they worked really hard for it. It really did rely on a lot of retakes and a lot of kind of like taking the site control and all that stuff. So seeing Farside definitely going that far, again, not even being biased at all, it's just seeing Farside going that far against the unit is something that's really good, especially on a new map like that. Um, so now they just got to be very careful because their next opponent, again, being, you know, element um, 111 is definitely going to be something that's going to be even harder because as of right now, Grizz and his team, of course, Grizz being the IGL for Element 111. Uh, Grizz and his team right now are very, they're unstoppable. As you can see, they beat, you know, they, they beat their first matchup 7-0. to zero. And then, of course, get a free dub versus a Prime Elite. And then now going to the third week, going against Farside. You know, Farside's definitely had to look, you know, straight and see the competition full head on and uh, definitely can't run away from it because it's going to be a Definitely a tough matchup, of course, to see. Um, but again, it's going to be a good matchup to see, and I can't wait for it. And they definitely blew my pers- my expectation. Unit definitely came into play. So I was definitely proud to see that they definitely reached it to 7 5, especially on a new map like that. But, you know, not not holding off on far side. I don't want to, you know, spend too long on them. Um, but the next matchup, of course, was the Reborn versus Taggart team. And uh, for the Taggart team, that one actually went 7-4. Um, and then for that one, I, our prediction, I think, what was it? Uh, I think it was 7-4. Yeah, we actually put 7-4, but in reverse. I think we put Reborn taking that, but it was actually Tugga Team taking 7-4, right? I think you made the prediction yeah, for that I, one. I in, my notes, in my notes, I have I actually have it completely right. I put it as Tugga uh, Team <laughs> winning. <laughs> oh, so, you do? Okay. Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> I was gonna say you, you can do. see my notes. <laughs> yes, you do. Awesome. Look at that. Seven four. Look. Okay. Okay. Loopy. Star. Oh. You can be the future, man. <laughs> I'm gonna say. See, I I don't want to say I told you so. <laughs> but I told you so. Now this one was on Cafe, which um as you pointed out at the the FG game, which was on um Oregon, which is definitely one of our newer maps to our map pool. Personally, not in pro, you know, not in pro league, not you know. Nothing crazy like that, but Cafe, pretty, it's 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 a little bit one of those maps that's a little done to death, but with the inclusion of Wamai, uh, I definitely think the map plays differently, and obviously I can't, we didn't see the game, it wasn't casted, it wasn't whatever, but kind of that introduction of Wamai, on, especially on Cafe, to me, sort of speaks volumes, because it is... It is a very grenade-heavy map. There are so many different places, uh, destructible floors that you can nade through, um, both up and down. Um, That whole loft, balcony kind of area, new balcony, you know, the two sides of new balcony. Um, I don't know if that's what this call is still, but that's at least what I've always called it. Uh, You know, all those things, just a lot of places that you can throw those nades. And with, as we a little bit talked about last week, there are just so many different grenades on attack now. And so the the Wamai being brought into play, I think, is definitely an awesome addition because I think it sort of changes Cafe a bit. 
because cafe has always been sort of that map that I see a lot of teams run always seem to have like have two people with frags on two set two different sets of frags just because they were so useful on the map as a whole total. So I'm glad uh, I, I obviously we never saw them. I don't know if they were played at all, but I do have a feeling that well, my was at least played once. This is also after the Jaeger nerf. He's now a two two. So maybe we'll saw, saw a little bit of the of the double closer not so deep roam but the closer roam with the two of them or maybe we saw one on site one roaming I, I sort of wish we had that little bit of an insight because the team that did win uh the tega team did i actually start on defense which says a lot to me because i always felt that cafe was a little bit more attacker favored if you did it right now i know every map technically is defender favored i understand that like if you look at the statistics Every map is defender favored, but as looking at it compared to other maps, I definitely think it's one of the more attack favored maps. And so to see them sort of dominate, um, I mean, seven four is not a dominate, but like to sort of win those defensive rounds and then come back and just clutch it up on attack says to me like, hey, they knew what they were doing. They they took advantage of it, and my guess is they shut down some of those grenades. So that's my that's that's my two cents on it. But you know, don't want to. Just like the previous one, I don't want to stem too much on this. So if you have anything to add, obviously we can or we can move on. No, you pretty much said it all, man. I don't want to jump into different you know, topics because you pretty much cleared it all out. But, um, you yeah, know, definitely shout out to Tiger Team because they took out Reborn. Reborn, again, not being it is a known team because it's been here for a very long time, but it's been a brand new little roster, you want to say to it. So actually seeing that roster compete against Tiger Team, that's very known, not in collective, but known almost everywhere else in the other communities. Um, it's actually a good thing to see them go that far. So. You know, it's pretty good. And again, Third Eye Titan, that's, you know, that's who we know them for. Um, so knowing who Third Eye Titan back in the day was, it's a pretty aggressive team. So I definitely see that the good job to them and getting the, the win on Reborn 7-4. But um, yeah, again, jumping into the next topic, we don't want to waste too much time on that one. But again, um, we have the next one that's coming up. And of course, that's Extinction versus Fallen Pharaohs. Um, for Fallen Pharaohs, again, I, this is the topic that I brought up before in the last podcast. I said it was pretty much a uh, new school versus old school. Um, of Extinction being the new school um, team, um, we, uh, you know, we, I predicted, I think it was, yeah, I was predicted that I jumped in and I said the Extinction, knowing that Extinction did go that far last game, Extinction actually went, if I'm correct, I think they went to overtime, I think the other day, yeah, they went to overtime versus Astro Esports, they went 8-7, uh, they beat Astro Esports, and fighting for their lives on that one, I bet, um, I did say that they were not going to probably go into overtime this time, I thought that Extinction was going to win 7-5 against Fallen Pharaohs, and probably the new school was going to beat the old school, but the actually was reversed. The old school actually came up on, on clutch moments and they came to the top as much as they can. And they actually won 7-4 and that was on Cafe. But the thing about that one is, and the thing I wanted to talk about so much that's really important in this game is that the game actually finished at 6-4 in favor of uh, Fallen Pharaohs. But the thing is why they got an extra point um, to make them go to 7-4 is because of the important thing that I told you guys before at the last, like the first, exactly the first episode of the podcast is that rules are completely different and rules show off of the skin. Um, so the reason why, you know, Fallen Pharaohs got that W is because I think they were actually, uh, Extinction, I think was rocking the Valkyrie elite, if I'm correct. Um, yep. so them, yeah. So them rocking Valkyrie elite, again, that being a banned cosmetic, we, you know, it was in the rule book. We told them very clearly that they're not allowed to use that cosmetic and they still used it accidentally. That does turn into a false round. Again, they are able to rehost and call that rehost, but the thing is they still ran the whole entire round with it. And that being said, that gave, you know, Fallen Pharaoh the W and made them take 7 4. And, um, you know, it is unfortunate for, you know, Extinction. But um, that being said, it is a rule that's been really clear. And I've, again, it is made known to all the captains and all the IGLs of each team that they have to read the rule book before, before confirming to play their games and all captains have and you know it is sad to see that they did have to lose and that is going to be their end of the race against Fallen Pharaohs but it's fine you know it's definitely good to see how Extinction did capitalize on an old team on an old school team and uh, to definitely see how Fallen Pharaohs committed it to their W and actually tried to take it as much as they can. They actually did a phenomenal job. And again, it on Cafe, um, you know, against Extinction, the only thing that was really bad was that from Extinction's matchup that I saw was just like what Loopy said on the previous podcast. When you have somebody with a lot of frag potential and he is carrying your team, if you want to use the word carry, it, it, it affects the team a lot because now, it, you know, you can see the leaderboard if you want to, you guys can probably see it, but I'm going to tell you guys is that 
for Fallen Pharaohs, they had a lot of numbers that are very complete together, like 8 kills, 10 kills, 11 kills. Like They were very close to each other. But for Extinction, they only had that one guy that had 14 kills. Again, the screenshot in the picture is for and from when they had 6-4, so who knows what had happened if they completed that last round. But that being said, you know it, it it did fall as Extinction had only fourteen kills, and the next person was five. You know, um, it, it did somebody else did have eight kills, but again, it's very far apart from each other because, um, especially the death amount that he had, it was just like having eight kills and eight deaths. It means that he gets a pick and then dies the rest. Um, so it, it, again, fragging potential is not everything that's going to be on you know for win a team. So that's the thing that sucks. But you know, th- them falling to Extinction. Is something that is going to be crucial for them. But as you can see in the next lineup for them and their matchup, excuse me, <clears throat> is that they have to actually face a pretty strong lineup anyways, because now that Fallen Pharaohs has does move in, they have to fight Tiger Team. Again, both teams, Tiger Team and Fallen Pharaohs, won their game 7 4. And, um, you know, it's really going to. I, I personally think this might, might be the you know the battle of the map again um, for that one because of the fact of how their their players are very similar um, in a lot of terms and again both of their maps went to cafe um, so I, I don't know if these guys want to go to cafe together at the exact same time see how it goes um, having the exact same outcome of seven four both games and almost having the exact same amount of frags from both games is something that you got to look into you know so both teams might want to take them both to cafe and see how it goes if not. Again, W is something we talk about later in the prediction pool. Uh, we talk about that in a few, you know, few hours, a few minutes, excuse me, in a few seconds. Uh, but Lupi, do you have anything you want to touch upon on that one? No, I, I really think you, you nailed that one. Nothing to be said. I mean, the the banned cosmetics. Um, just for those of you who might not know everything, um, the reason the the there are two banned elites. Valkyrie's Elite and Twitch's Elite, and the reason why they are both banned is actually not anything to do with the skin themselves. It has to do with the fact that their gadget changes. Um, Valkyrie's cameras and her Elite skin are just a little bit harder to see, and obviously a really well-hidden Valkyrie camera can win and lose rounds just based on the camera alone. So having a harder-to-spot camera is just... No matter how minute of an edge it is, it is still an edge, and it's a pretty brutal edge to have. And the issue with um, Twitch's drone is, for whatever reason, her skin, elite skin, sometimes when you're driving around with a drone, it'll appear that there are two driving around, um, a few, like, probably a foot apart from each other. And in a split-second decision where you have to shoot the drone and you know, flick, flick down, shoot the drone and flick back up, you shoot at the wrong one, uh, that can just... You, you miss the drone you you know they get you know the the twitch is able to do whatever she's allowed to do just um that one's definitely more of a bug but the the issue is that these two gadgets in general are just a little bit too strong with the advantages that the skin gives them which is why they're banned like we don't just ban these cosmetics for no reason we understand especially when it comes to elites you spent your hard-earned money on this like you you spent real life money on this skin because it looks pretty it looks cool it's your favorite operator however you want to phrase it so we don't make these bands for no reason there are reasons behind them um just so everyone knows i want that to be clear so that is why they have to be banned unfortunately and just running in a, a banned skin it'll get you in trouble it's gotten teams in trouble in season two it got uh got a lot of teams in trouble in season two honestly we had several around forfeits as um banned skins for banned skins so just as unfortunate yeah it definitely is unfortunate and of course you know we, we're going to make it clarified to all the captains once again to um you know, definitely know what's going on and you know, make sure to read the, re- the rule book once again because we don't want to have that complication happen again. Um, but yeah, you know, Fallen Pharaohs take the W and that's pretty much else we can pretty much say about that, you know. Um, hopefully they, we see them come back later on. Never know, it might make Masters because of this performance um, for Extinction or they might go into Ventures. Who knows? But we'll see and uh, can't wait to see what their, obviously their outcome is. Um, but not going to waste any time on that. I'm going to jump onto the next one. And again, the next one is going to be, uh, if I'm correct, Bearded Dragons versus Delta Esports. So, Lupi, you can actually go ahead and kill that one, okay? So, I don't know what happened. Like, Delta, Delta had kind of a lot of potential and I'm not really sure what happened because they just, 7-2. They lost 7-2. And I think, if anything, it just goes to show you sort of how much of a threat Bearded Dragon is. 
BDG, uh, BDG, I think that just goes to show how much of a threat they are. Because Delta had a really, really good showing, or not really good showing, because this is their first match, but they had really, really high potential. They There was a lot of, like, things sort of in their favor, and they just, they just couldn't, they couldn't seem to get a grip. Like, they couldn't seem to get their feet on the ground, and it, it is sort of one of those things where I just, not only do I wish we were, ca- like, that we sort of could see the game itself, but I, I sort of wish I was in the party because I just feel like something had to have gone wrong. Because if you look at the scoreboard, they did, you know, uh, Delta did good fragging. They had someone with 12, so, uh, two people with, it looks like eight. Like they had, they had a good amount of frags, but they only won two rounds. And sort of when you have that kind of high frags on a team that only won two rounds, I, I don't really know what to make of that. And, uh, you know, on the uh, reverse side, uh, let's see, 18 kills, or is that 15? I can't, it's a little fuzzy. Not the highest quality, but it's fine. Uh, like, just, so, let's see, let's see, first off, MVP of the week as well. Uh, good job on him. Absolutely fantastic job. Uh, he went eight, 18, 5, and 4. 18 kills, 5 deaths, 4 assists. Uh, for those of you who don't know the standard KDA arrangement. Uh, so, you know, maybe it was just, you know, with Glitzy sort of leading the charge, and we, like, like we sort of talked about with, um, like Monkey just talked about, you know, Glitzy just leading the charge as that high frag player, just able to go out there and sort of lead his team. But I just, like I said, I just, you you can't look at a scoreboard that had all those high frags and only had two total round wins and sort of just sit there and sort of think, what happened? Like, there had to have been miscommunications, you know, false false pretenses, something. Like, I feel like nothing went wrong there from gameplay-wise. I think it just was some missteps from the team itself. And so I do sort of wish we were in the party when it happened because... That is just an interesting scoreline in total. Didn't expect it even remotely to, to be that much of a blowout. So, anything to add to that? Um, no, no. Um, again, it pretty much sells for itself. It shows that hey, this is the MVP of the week. Glitzy was not playing any games, dropping eighteen five and four. So it was definitely something very important. Um, but no, it, it, that's that's pretty much it, man. Eight five and four, um, going that high and see the kill boards. And again, on Clubhouse, something that you, it's more of a strat heavy team map. Like you know, maps need to know how to play this map. And um, you know, going against a team like that and beating them, you know, seven to two is is definitely crucial. It's definitely crucial. Um, you know, Beater Dragon was something that you know back in the you know not back in the day. I'm not gonna say back in the day, but they did beat Lunar Esports seven to two. You know, um, and now going against Delta Esports and beating them seven to two once again is is something to definitely look forward to, and it, you can't forget that. You definitely can't, which is it's ridiculous. You know, it, it's it's something crazy to look into, and um, just yeah, I can't wait to see their outcomes again. That's for sure. Definitely, definitely. And then the last game, um, unfortunately, MMG Void uh, got a free week. They got a they um. They just hazard didn't uh didn't um there was an issue and they couldn't play their game, which obviously just gives an automatic win to MMG Void. Yeah. So you know, not much to say there. Uh, again, it's another thing that does suck. But um, you know, these teams, you know, they, they they sign up for this. You know, they sign up for a free event, free league, and sometimes they just not able to play it, and it, you know, it's fine. Um, but again, now it's getting closer and closer to almost like getting to finals. And once this last week that's coming up right here, when we talk about the bracket that's coming up after this last week is over, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's it. It's going to be casting time. It's going to be pretty much BO3s. It's going to be awesome. We can't wait to see them. But as um, the bracket does come out, um, it's going to be pretty much Farside Gaming Bravo going to be taking on Element 111. It's going to be Tag a Team versus Fallen Pharaohs. Um, that's just for bracket number one. For bracket two, it's going to be Bearded Dragon Gaming versus, uh, of course, I think it's Plague, right? I think, yeah, I think it's Plague they're playing. Um, and then it's going to be PRS Gaming versus MMG Void. So those are going to be some intense matchups. You know, it's going to be really cool. And of course, after whoever wins this is getting closer and closer to finals, um, closer and closer to guaranteeing their spot as masters. And, you know, you definitely want to see those BO3s. And of course, if you guys do, again, sign up for it, guys. It's going to be on Twitch, Collective Esports, guys. All right. Collective underscore Esports. That's what's going to be. It's literally going to be on Twitch. If you guys want to watch their matchup, it's going to be a BO3. Um, 
you know, when, when the times are out and when these teams confirm or when they can play, of course, it'll be everywhere. It'll be on Twitter. It'll be on Instagram. Um, it'll be up, guys. So you guys can know ahead of time when um, to watch and catch up these guys. And, of course, we'll probably mention it in the podcast next time as well, like if, if these guys are playing and when they're playing. So you guys can stay tuned because if they are going to be playing, I don't, I don't want you guys to miss it, you know, because we're not going to miss it. <laughs> we want to make sure we mention the next podcast, of course. And, uh, you know, that, that's something we definitely talk about. Um, you know, but that being said, though, I want everybody to know that what's going to be the next topic going to play right now. We're going to skip the predictions for a little bit. We're actually going to wait that. And for a little bit, we do got our, our man Drew here. So Drew's gonna actually going to be coming in with stats to be talking about what's going to be happening. What's season three looking like? And also maybe even talk about some secrets that's going to be happening in uh, the BO3s for the qualifiers. So, Drew, the stage is all yours, buddy. Hello. Um, how's everything going? Um, so, yeah. Uh, for those who don't know me, I do. Um, I run all the statistics for Collective. Um, I've been here since oof, I can't even remember now. Actually, <laughs> um, it was part of the way through season one, I believe. Yeah, but it's, you're pretty much here with some of the founding members. You've been here for a really long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like um, there was um, they they used to be uh, an established uh, EU branch to Collective, um, and I, I kind of. That's where I've come from, and obviously EU instead of NA, um, which involves having a backwards clock a lot of the time. Um, but you know, that's all good. And uh, yeah, um, about a year and a half ago, I got asked to come over and um, do the statistics for NA, and uh, I'm still here a couple a couple years later. So yeah, uh, looking forward to season three, of course. Um, for to kind of talk a little bit more sp specifically on what I do. Um, I do data collection primarily um, and then some data analysis um, and being a data analyst as opposed to being an analyst uh, within Rainbow Six um, is slightly different. Uh, the data analyst specifically deals with uh, the numbers of what's going on um, they don't necessarily tell you um, where you're going wrong um, but they can at least provide all the figures and as, so that's what I do. I'm a data analyst in the position of the league, so that means that I do this for all teams. I'm a complete neutral. Um, I'm, not, I'm not involved with any teams, of course, being all the way in the EU. Um, and yeah, I just try to add a little extra perspective um, for for you guys, uh, for obviously for the teams themselves, uh, and then for anyone interested uh, and watching, and and then of course the casters as well to help kind of paint the story in the picture of. Uh, yeah, what's going on? As a league is very much a storyline, and I, I believe that statistics are a big part of that. I like that. Uh, I like that uh, analogy a lot. That it's like a story. I do like that a lot. Because yeah, I'll tell you, yeah. looking at a looking at a stat page when casting as like an experienced caster, looking at a stat page and being like, "This is what happened in X amount of games or whatever," you definitely have a little bit more information to play with, and you can kind of take the conversation in more unique ways and get that. It just makes the cast a lot easier and a lot more fluid. So we appreciate the stats immensely. It's it's definitely where um <clears throat> the the whole kind of story aspect is very important to me as well. I mean, even if you take your MVP of the week, Glitzy, um, he went eighteen and four. He had a he had a two KPR for the whole game, which is nuts. Um, and going into the next game, you know that based off that statistic, um, that Ash player is going to be. You know, front and center of, of everyone's questions um, with, with how good this team can be. They, are they going to live and die by the Fraga? Is he going to be able to keep up this performance? Can he maybe transfer it to other maps against other opponents? And that, that's just one player and one statistic. So if you have access to a whole uh, database of statistics, then it allows you to further um, explore other avenues of the story. And, and yeah, exactly, especially for the casters to, um, to really set up a match. Um, and and to to add to add to it as the story develops, so as the match carries on. So just just to just to throw a, a little bit of a question in there for those of you who don't know, what is KPR? K oh sorry, KPR is uh, kills per round. Um, and it's kind of worth saying at this point as well that um, uh, although I'm, I'll obviously be very present within uh, the collective Discord service themselves, I do have my own server, which everyone has wanted to join, where I have a lot of explanations for all of these terms. Um, and within the stats database, I will obviously have explanations too, but KPR is just kills per round. Um, it's basically how many kills you got divided by the rounds play. So in, in Glitzy's uh, example, he had 18 kills. It was a 7-2, so that's nine rounds. 
which equates to two kills per round on average. Um, of course, he may not have got exactly two kills every round, but yeah, that's how the math works out. Um, obviously, for KPR, you kind of want to be, if, if you could be at a one KPR or more, that's great, because that means that you're at least trading yourself out every round, um, which just in terms of, obviously, frags aren't everything in Siege, but um, especially if you're in one of those fragging positions, um, being at around a one KPR or above um, is very important. One of my favorite stats, and I think one of the most telling, is I can't remember exactly what it's called, but the opening frag. You know, what team gets that 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 leg up early in the early in the game? And that's probably one of my to me it's one of the most telling stats. If someone has a really high like first kill, you know, opening kill or whatever, that's the player you gotta look out for because that's gonna be the that's most likely the aggressive player. That's the that's the lead, that's the entry, that's that's the person you gotta watch out for. That's the first person you're gonna have your crosshairs on, or at least hypothetically. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um opening kills are extremely impactful. Um, I could be the most impactful kill in a round um, because you're putting your team, not only are you putting your team in a 4v5 advantage, but you're taking away utility. And it doesn't matter whether you're on attack or defense, it, it rings true. If you're on if you're attack, um, you're playing on entry and you kill, um, say, the Jaeger, um, that is basically putting, you're giving yourself the man advantage. And yeah, sure, Jaeger may not be the most impactful kill because of the way his utility is. It's just kind of, you set it down, you forget it, you run off, you go and get kills. Um, but it still helps a lot with uh, cutting down your roam clear time. Um, uh, and yeah, eventually you just, if, if you play your trays out, you'll always have the man advantage. And then on defense, um, let's say you are the Jaeger and you, you take away the Zofia. Well, that's a lot of utility, especially in today's meta, which those attackers don't have. You know, so arguably, you 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 could argue that um, the the defenders getting the opening pick is a little bit more impactful than the attackers, um, just because of the meta. But either way, it's super important. I, def I definitely agree. Um, what are some of the like just in general? Like, let's talk. You know, we talked a little bit about players here. So, what are some more like just baseline statistics that we apply to teams as a total? Like, do we? You know, obviously, there's always the win loss, which is you know, yeah, which is sort of the stat that when you know when you think of like a team stat that's sort of the stat that most people like go to how often do you win versus how often do you lose right etc cetera, etc cetera. but i think at least for me the more the more important stat because when it comes like it's not always prevalent but when it comes in it can definitely you live or die by these are rounds played slash one like your win loss on rounds because that does affect standings and leagues um tiebreakers come down to those etc cetera, etc cetera. and those are some of the more detailed and less you know less talked about stats from a team perspective so do you want to talk a little bit about like sort of what that means yeah of course and, and also to kind of bring a little bit more backing track on what um what the statistics will look like for for season three as well um i'm wanting to expand a little bit more on those statistics that you're talking about um there will be obviously the player statistics and everyone will be able to see how well they are doing on an individual level um but also the team as a whole will be able to see hey you know um we are a good coastline team um every game that we play in coastline we're winning at least seven three um it's a very strong map for us um and also on the flip side they'll be able to um they'll be able to say maybe let's take coastline we're one for one in coastline and both matches have nearly been a draw uh so yeah exactly just having a win loss is it doesn't tell the full story you do need to add in the rounds as well um even if it's just um rounds on a particular side maybe you're a really good attacking team on coastline but you're not very good on defense and that's where the other team sort of catches up a little bit um and also it is it's also very handy for you to, for to, to have these numbers available for you if you want to study other teams as well. Um, maybe, Loopy, you're, you're playing a certain team next week and, and you're trying to figure out what your map bands are going to be. Um, and the, the statistics that are there may influence that decision. You may decide to um, target ban uh, a, a map that they're strong on. Maybe you want to play a map that they're weak on, or maybe you just want to go by your own strengths and weaknesses. Um, it's completely up to you. But again, the statistics kind of give you the, the tools to make those informed decisions. Drew allows us to play 4D chess. Just so everyone knows, he allows us to play four-dimensional chess. Pretty much, we're just little players. It's awesome. 
Um, and there's also going to be a few new features that I'm going to add in as well. So for anyone who was around here in season two, um, the statistics I had were pretty rudimentary. Um, and for anyone who's listening who's been a part of the PC scene for Collective, uh, will have seen some of the, uh, the new wave of statistics that I'm bringing in. Um, so to start, uh, everything will be centralized around uh, Google Sheets, meaning that people will be able to access them at any time. Uh, they'll be able to share them with their team. Um, and everyone will be able to see everything. Like there won't be steps. Um, of the only person I'll have extra access is myself, of course. Um, He's going to be working behind the scenes, but it's not like you're going to have set permissions, so you can't see certain teams or anything. You'll be able to see everything there uh, because, again, it's, I'm approaching this from a neutral standpoint. I want everyone to have the exact same information. Um, so, yes, again, everyone will have their own uh, player profiles. Uh, it will allow them to see how well they're doing in, in each statistic, so that whether it be kills, deaths, KPR, cost, rounds. Um, and they'll also be able to filter that as well. So they'll be able to see how well they're doing maybe in the past month. Um, because as we know, you, you know, when you log on to Ranked and you see those two stats on the right hand side of your screen that say, you know, 1.1 win loss or 1.2 KD, and you just know you've played so many games, you're never going to move that needle up or down. And um, well, this will kind of solve that a little bit. It'll be, it'll be able to show you your entire career stats within Collective, of course. But it'll also be able to give you a bit of um, insight onto how well you're doing in recent times as well, and, and to kind of compare that against um, maybe other players in your team, your opposition, or even just yourself, um, and, to, and to see where you need to make improvements um, or where your team can best uh, utilize you, I guess, um, due to your strengths. So, yes, there will be player profiles, um, which, yeah, I, I, I hope it's something that. Um, people can be excited about because it's a it's a pretty cool tool to have, and it <laughs> it also solves the issue of everyone um, asking me in Discord um, asking for their stats as well. And I could just like go do it yourself. <laughs> I do see that a lot. Um, like we said, uh, a lot of times the you know the stats person of leagues or whatever kind of go unnoticed. Uh, not always, you know. It's usually like, a, but it usually is in general a thankless job. But Drew um, probably wishes it was a little less. A little bit more thankless because Drew is definitely constantly bothered. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you've got this many teams, um, it is yeah, it's kind of hard to listen to everyone at once. And I, I do appreciate all the messages and everything. Um, when people do ask, they just make me feel like what I'm doing is worthwhile. Um, it is genuinely my pleasure. It's what I enjoy doing. Um, and yeah, like to kind of reflect that, I've wanted to add a few extra bonus things as well. And um, so. A few people have been asking me for a rating system. And the thing is, I kind of disagree with rating systems in general. Um, a rating system, if you take CSGG's rating system, um, and I do a little bit of work for CSGG as well, so I'm, I'm kind of very close to, um, I, I don't know exactly how the rating system is made. Um, not a lot of the staff know that, but I can at least have an idea of what goes into it. Um, and the idea behind the rating system is to basically um, put all of those stats into a blender and to form one statistic that you can compare every single player on. It doesn't matter what team they're on, how many games they've played, what role they play, which is also extremely important. Um, you will be able to use this rating statistic to, to measure each player on a scale. And personally, I don't agree with that. Um, I think it's a fantastic tool for you know giving like a, a brief look of how good a player is um but coming from a support players background I, I just don't agree with um summarizing a player's performance or how good they are um with just one number um so a rating system will not be a thing that i will be adding however um i will be introducing collective elo and collective elo will um, work as a way to rank you and and uh, and and give you a a rating um, and a rank, um, just like in ranked, of course, um, uh, which will be able to compare you against other players based off collective games. Um, and if I if that doesn't <laughs> doesn't make any sense, um, think of it like ranked. You obviously have your copper all the way through to champion. Um, we'll just say diamond for now. 
and you have MMR, um, which is the, the number of MMR you have. And once you reach a certain threshold, that's where you get your rank, um, whether it be uh, 2,400 for getting into gold, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm going to, I have built a ELO system, um, which will mean that every single match that you play within Collective um, will have a MMR attached to it. Um, and, and that's kind of like my compromise a little bit um, between having a rating system and, and not, because uh, I don't, yeah, I don't really agree with rating systems in general. I, I, I don't, I don't think it encourages uh, team play. I think it encourages people to play for stats more, and and that's not what I'm about. Um, whereas with Elo, you need to be working together as a team uh, to maximize your MMR gains. I mean that you know I, I think overall that makes a lot of sense because everyone does different things. That like, the teams don't live and die by KD. Players don't live and die by KD. Players do so so much more. They they use utility. They ex they waste utility. And, and wait, well, <clears throat> sorry, waste other teams' utility. <laughs> let me let me let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase uh, that for people watching and listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stuff like that. So like so, KD is sort of just one side to a player. It's like looking at like a, like a dodecahedron. That's a 12-sided shape for those of you. Uh, and saying Katie's the whole thing. It's like, no, no, it's that's one side, but there are still eleven others. So I definitely prefer that kind of a system because it definitely allows, for example, support players to maybe, just maybe, even if they have not the best Katie, they might still be able to get like that diamond or champion ranking. Just because they're that good at doing other things that Katie for them doesn't really matter. Yeah, and and to allude to a point that you made earlier as well, when um, you you were talking about one of the recent games, um, you were talking about how uh, you would have liked to have been in the comms at the moment. Um, you, we we don't know every single factor that went into a win and a loss, and I I don't think that boiling it down to one number will help that either. Um, and I I think that's the main kind of message that I'm sending here is that I'd like people to take my statistics and use them like a flag system. Um, I don't want people to look at them and go, um, I don't want a team to look at them and go, OK, you on Jaeger suck. You've got your red statistics, you got poor KD. Um, you should just not play Jaeger. Um, I want them to instead look at that and go, right, you've got poor statistics in Jaeger. Let's have a look at the VOD and find out why. Um, because it may be beyond statistics, and, and that's something that is really important. You don't know whether um, there was a hidden drone that was giving away your position at all times. You don't know whether you got a bad call, maybe from a teammate. Maybe you do just suck and you were missing shots. Who knows? Like it's, uh, it could be any number of things, but um, if, if I can't give you the 100% truth on, on a spreadsheet. Um, it's up to you guys to, to, to use the statistics as a tool um, to improve. Um, as both players and as a team. Definitely well said, Drew. You know, this is really going to be something that's going to come in handy, and I can't wait to see it actually in, in action, you know, um, for definitely season three, and uh, I just can't wait, man. I definitely can't wait. Have you got any particular questions of yourself? Because I, I realize um, I'm making a huge jump in terms of, of features between season two and season three, um, and it, it's kind of easy for me just to <laughs> kind of talk about it from here because I've been working on it. But is there anything um, yourself that you would like to see as a player um, and as staff as well um, going into next season? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Definitely, what I would love to, uh, especially being an, an you know the head admin of Collective and you know being a player as well, it would be awesome to see that feature, like for it to come on the screen um, while it's being streamed at the same time of like you know like past games as as, as a player. And there's going to be a lot of stats and a lot of um, you know graphics for it. Um, but at one point, you know, hopefully Collective can definitely do it, and hopefully you can help out with that as well, Drew. So, um, you know, like let's, let's use myself as an example is that you know we're going into a game, and you know you know in between round phases or even in between like talking while casters are talking about the maps they can even show like the picture of like let's say let's use my like like my logo for example use my even logo as an example and put my stats up with the logo put some video behind the logo um and just talk about the stats and that'd be like kind of awesome to do and uh just having that feature would be something that's pretty cool i know that for a fact and uh hopefully we can definitely do that you know we can definitely roll that out 
hopefully for season three or even mid season three it'll be pretty awesome yeah i mean those it things will take time but they'll definitely add a lot um oh yeah and and yeah like a, I, I i guess my my role is just part of a small cog and and really elevating this league to be something special and something that players could be proud of being a part of Jeez. yeah that's it's true and it's gonna be awesome going getting back into action and seeing what's gonna happen but like andrew is there anything else you want to say to everybody that's listening um at home or whatever they're doing right now um the only thing i will say is that um i so i, I do have a, a dedicated disco server in which i do intend to use as a um, a little bit of a hub um, for all of my projects. Um, Collective isn't the only project I, I do some work for. Um, I'm always keeping busy. Um, so it's good to kind of keep um, everyone who's curious about keeping up with my work um, in one place. And I've kind of been saving this uh, for this particular part. Um, but I will be offering as a service, um, as a product rather, um, very soon a spreadsheet template for you as a team uh, to track your own statistics and have um, even more in-depth uh, analysis on how you're doing on each map, how you're doing on each site, how each player is doing with each operator against certain opponents um, with certain operators. It's going to be extremely in-depth um, and it's going to be exclusively exclusively for your team. So. Um, yeah, it's more for tracking your own team performance than, than a whole league, um, which is obviously something a little bit different um, to what I've done before, um, because I've, I've been focusing primarily on, on, on league statistics. But yeah, this product will be, um, I, I, I still need to finish it, um, but I, yeah, I do plan to roll it out um, to teams. I will probably charge for it because I'd like to make some return on it. But um, yeah, if, if anyone's been a fan of the, the work I do and 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 they appreciate having those statistics. Um, it's just the beginning. There's there's plenty more to come. And um, yeah, just keep your your ear to the ground on on that one because I, I will I will be having more information on that very soon. <laughs> Good. Again, not I don't know if you guys would know, but knowing definitely me being in IGL, I would love to have the information to you know to show my team to be like, hey, let let, let me brag real quick to you guys and tell you guys what we actually could do, what maps we really, really are bad at, and what we need to work on. And again, I could actually have two coaches for my team, and it's actually really, really good to show them these statistics as well. Um, and just proving to them, hey, look, we need to work on this map. Let's find out why. And again, having those stats and paying for them, I would definitely pay for them just to get the statistics for my team. And you know, if I want to get a better team, especially, and uh, hopefully for everybody else listening, I hope you guys do look into that information as well, because when that comes out. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm gonna be the first one buying that, Drew. So uh, be ready for that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, in, in terms of pricing, it's a bit of a sensitive subject to the minute, just because of you know the current global situation. I know, um, you know, it's uh, the, the the whole uh, subject of money and funds and stuff is is not always a, a great subject for for some people. Um, so yeah, I'll be keeping that sort of thing on hold for now. But the future itself will definitely be coming, um, and I'm I'm very excited to to show you guys what I've been working on. Yeah, and again, I can't wait to see it, and I can't wait to see what's what's to come. You know, I yeah, anything that says season three is just you know blowing my mind to see what's going on. I can't wait to really see it, man. Uh, so again, Drew, if you got nothing else, man, I do appreciate you stopping by and uh, you know giving us your updates of what's going to happen for season three. Again, being an admin, being a player, being an IGL for the you know for my team, this is all great news, and I can't wait to see this actually take an effect. You know, I can't yeah. really wait. I can't wait for the season to start, like, honestly. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been a long wait. So, yeah, I'm looking, for, looking forward to season three properly kicking off. It's going to be lit. <laughs> and taking off of that note, um, like you said before, can't wait for season three. And we're going to jump right back into it. Qualifiers, guys. We have to wait for qualifiers to be over. We're almost there. We're almost at the point that we need to reach. And, you know, once it reaches there, we have to see who's going to be in which bracket, who's going to be in which division, who's going to be in which um conference and you know we literally have to wait for the qualifiers to definitely test out what's going to happen and like i said before guys um every time we get information of what we know we'll send it to you guys and uh, you guys will know it again on social media anything collective wise guys is on social media so remember collective esports um it's be on twitter it can be on twitch it can be on instagram facebook it doesn't matter what we got guys we got all of it to be honest and you know we'll keep you guys informed with that um what's going on and you know, for season three, the start of season three is something that you guys need to definitely look forward to and look into it. Um, but 
again, we'll keep you guys posted for it. But going back into the qualifiers, as Drew was saying, he's ready for season three. I'm ready for season three. But we, we're going to talk back about qualifiers and let you guys know what's going to be happening for the future of qualifiers so far. Um, like I said, there's going to be, I think, if I'm correct, four more teams that are just going to be duking it out. Excuse me, four more matches from uh, – when it comes to in total of matches, um, two from each bracket at the moment. So I can tell you before, guys, it's going to be it's going to be FG Bravo pretty much taking on Element One One One. We have Hacket Team versus um, Fallen Pharaohs, uh, Bearded Dragon Gaming, of course, from the second bracket taking on Plague. Um, we do have, of course, BR BRS Gaming taking on MMG Void. So those matchups are the only ones that are completely left. Um, I can't wait for those to take place. Um, like I said, guys, it's going to be taking place this week. So by the time this recording is going off, maybe we haven't seen any matches going on just yet. We might, you know, we might be a little late. But of course, we'll give you guys more information as much as possible on social media, so you guys can give me posted. And of course, when we get it from the podcast, we'll let you guys know as well. But for our predictions, of course, I know Loopy sadly did leave the building for something very important, for family issues. But I even let you guys know predictions. So I think that personally, and again, not being biased, because of course, guys, I'm an admin, I'm a caster, I'm everything that comes to games um so i'm just gonna let you guys know the predictions that loopy did leave me behind and the predictions that we had um so what he thought of course not being biased i don't want to pick for my own team uh for bravo but he thought and i also thought to be honest is element 111 was gonna take that game uh 7-4 uh, for tag a team i thought that pharaohs were gonna take that game 7-5 uh for beater dragons versus uh plague that game is gonna go into double overtime we thought it was gonna be eight 8-6, to be honest, and I was going to be Bearded Dragon sticking that W. And then for PRS Gaming versus MMG Void, I actually thought that MMG Void was going to take that one 7-4. Um, so, again, based on maps, it's going to be a very crucial match. And, you know, I don't want to take you guys too much time on that one. But we're going to be almost ending up this podcast, guys. So, of course, to end off the podcast, you know how it is, guys. We're going to talk about the question of the week. So, when it comes to the question of the week, we're going to be talking about who... The question of the week for last week, excuse me, was who do you think the two teams are going to be taking it to finals? We didn't talk about who's going to win it. I just wanted to see who was going to take it to finals. Um, and a lot of people were actually predicted, and a lot of people came back to me and actually responded to it. Uh, a lot of people actually saw that MG Void was going to take it to finals against Pharaohs. So that was actually going to be a good matchup to see if it does get that far. Again, being MMG Void, being a new school team, and seeing Fallen Pharaohs being a pretty much more of a old school team is actually going to be a good matchup to see. Especially, let's say if Fallen Pharaohs does make it as far as they should against Element One One One, and they do beat that challenging competition, it's going to be a hell of a brawl going against MMG Void. So it's actually a good competition. I can't wait to see that one happen if it does. You know, if those predictions are correct from you guys. Um, but of course, the next question of the week is something that we wanted to just talk about of how it's going to go and how far it will reach. Um, do you think, personally, for next week, here's the question of the week, guys, all right? Do you think, and I want you to know probably by, maybe by an answer about the team, guys, just don't even have to tell me about the player, let's tell me about a team. With the teams that are left in the, both of the brackets, number one and bracket number two, who do you think is going to hit 20 kills first, okay? Who do you think is going to hit 20 kills first? Um, we've been so close. Glitzy has been pretty much hitting double digits twice games already. Um, I think he's hit 18 kills and like 16 kills in between, so he's pretty close to 20. But do you think that somebody's going to hit the 20? So if you can answer, it's like a two-part question if you want to answer like that. Who do you think is going to make it? Like what team? Like what team do you think is going to hit the 20 mark first? And do you think if there is going to be a team that's going to hit it first? Of course, hitting the yes or no. Obviously, if you say no, then it's no. But if you say yes, I would love to know what kind of team it is, guys, and who do you think is going to make it. But I'm going to end off the topic there. Drew, do you have anything to say, buddy, for these guys listening at home or listening to wherever they're at? Uh, I don't. Um, uh, just everyone keep staying safe. Uh, keep doing what you need to do to keep yourself mentally sound um you know uh in these in these times and uh yeah keep playing good siege there you go it's a quote of the day for my man drew right there guys just keep you guys close and you know keep your family safe guys it's quarantine out there and hope you guys are all safe and uh, maintaining and hope we're keeping you guys entertained at wherever you guys are at and uh, of course this has been behind the call out this has my has been monkey of course my my lovely co-host loopy did have to disappear but we do have drew as our guest host coming in and hopefully this is not was not would not be the end of it either we'll probably see him pretty him pretty much a lot of times here but of course, guys, I want to let you guys know this is behind the call out, and I keep you guys posted. And of course, you'll see you guys on the flip side.